The Lake of Dreams, the Blue Lagoon. I'm back and hopefully I can make it happen. It's just another level up here. You know, it's one place on the, on the drive up. I'm excited like a kid at Christmas. I get out of the car, I start getting goose pimples and then you come over and you're sort of just watching the water and think, right now this is it and join the year again. Right, well, you join me in my little, almost car boot sale, Bivy. <laughs> if you like, a few holes in it now, I've just noticed, which is a slightly worrying for this evening. It's all sort of falling apart, but I've managed to break my front here. So at the moment, I've literally just thrown everything in this Bivy. It's blowing like a hoolie as it normally is at Dean's. It's just, it's like, it's got, it's got its own weather forecast. That's one, probably one way of putting it across. The first thing I've done is something I always do, and it's done me well in the past, is put bait out on the spot, and that's exactly what I've done. I've given a Parker Bates bucket, so I'd say there's anywhere between three and four and a half kilo, and I've put it on a spot that I know where I had the big one before. So Steve, roll the footage now, mate, and um, I'm just gonna talk through. Last time I was up here, um, I went to like an out Outlaw Pro Day, and uh, we come back. Prior to that, I put loads and loads and loads of bait out, Parker Bait, OG Fish, Pellet, so that consists of a four, six, and eight, absolutely love slammed it in a whole bucket over this spot in between these two trees it's just under 12 wraps this particular spot and um went to the outlaw pro day come back fucked to load more bait in and dean was like christ you know put enough bait out you're gonna get your rods out and that was like yeah you're probably right mate i should get my rods out and then yeah something magical happened i hooked into this fish and straight away i knew it was a good one and sort of just started pulling me all over the lake you know like i've hooked into something like i've never before particularly at this venue um, like I said, I knew straight away, this is it, you know, is this, is this one of them real big ones? And, you know, fortunately it was um, a fish called measles, I think it was 36, eight, I think off the top of my head. And what an absolute beauty, you know, one of the, one of the bigger ones in here. And at the time it was a late record. Now, Mr. Ian Russell's been up here doing a bit and um, he actually had the fish a couple of weeks ago at 38 pounds, a fair play to him, and now that is the current late record. Now, the reason why I bring this up is, is because there's fish in here that haven't been caught. It was fish stocked, um, I think it's four, five years ago now, sort of low 30s, 33, particularly a lever and a few others, and then fish are still yet to come out. So they could be in excess or will be in excess of that. I think I had another fish called um, Nelson. I think it was it as one eye. And again, you're seeing this on the screen now, what a fish that was, proper character thing. So now you join me probably six, seven months on. I've turned up and I've just thrown absolutely everything in the bivy. And now what am I doing? I'm quickly making some little PVA bag rigs, some little short ones. Um, with some natural beans on but the kettle is boiling down there and i need to shrink some sh some shrink some shrink tube and also make a cuppa as well Right, well that is the rods out finally. I've not come prepared whatsoever. I mean, I got back off a 10 day holiday, spent a lovely day with the missus yesterday and just threw everything in the van throughout the day. And obviously I've turned up and it's utter carnage in my van. And like I said earlier, while sat there, there's just things everywhere. It's a little bit cleaner now, but the rods are out there on the dance floor. Right hand rod went out, bang, strap. I'm not even feeling for a drop because the wind early was massively dramatic. <laughs> it was like tip forward, how I've been hitting the spawn, just tip down, Right hand rod went out absolutely fine on the money, like I just mentioned. Left hand rod, I'm not going to lie, didn't hit clip. I was like, oh, you know what? Brad was like, oh, is that right? I was like, nah, it's not. So I reeled it back in, done again. Sometimes it's a pain, but I like to say how Mr. Forty Fish is, you know, he's very, very precise in what he does. If it's two inches to the left of where he wants it, he reeled it back in and go again, which is a similar scenario where I was. Didn't hit clip, 100%, reel it back in then, don't be lazy, go again. Done that, obviously had the clip, remade the bag, 
Second time, bang, tip forward. Again, not even feeling for a drop. Getting that line nice and straight. Tip down under the water, sinking the line, undoing my clip, job done. I'm actually fishing back leads as well. And that's something I've always done here at Dean's. I like to fish quite refined. I think the fish are semi-switched on to a degree. It's never easy up here for some reason. Um, but I've got them rods, um, got them lines, sorry, pinned to the bottom with them back leads and all the way to the spot. So theoretically, you can have your tips up like that. And I know people that have watched the channel for a long period of time, I've had it before, and it's always in the comments, Ben, why have you got your tips up? If you're fishing back leads, from my perspective, I quite like the buzz of the rod bending and buckling too, sort of pulling up against the, the um, alarms. It's all quite exciting, and that's another reason why I do that. But because your back leads are down at the tip of the rod, you're still fishing effectively. So there it is, rods out on the dance floor and it's time to order some food. So I'll probably touch base with you an hour or so. Like I said, the darkness is coming in very quickly. Yes, the wind has dropped ever so slightly, but there is still a bit of a chop on the water. Hopefully it's flat calm tonight, but like you said, it's time to lock onto the water and hopefully see some, see some signs. I mean, if I see something proactively jumping in one spot or showing in one spot subtly or in your face, then yeah, it might be worth pulling one off the spot and putting it on it, and that is what I'll do. But at the moment, I'm confident wherever I am. I've had fish off this particular spot before. The bait went out lovely. Now it's just down to, like I said, down to the cut cuts. <laughs> fingers crossed. Just fingers crossed one of them absolute monsters comes along and um, brings another smile here at the Lake of Dreams. No comment, that's all I'm going to say there. Well, that's very light for me. Um, it's been a bit of a nightmare. The lads have had their food. Mine didn't turn up. Went round in circles on the phone, but now it's finally here. And look at the state of that. We've got a bit, some, bit of chicken in there, some lamb, and I've just sort of thrown the salad in. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a sad, Ben, but happy that I'm out of the Lake of Dreams. <laughs> I need to eat this because I'm absolutely starving, if I'm honest. I don't normally eat this late. But like I said, Rod's on the dance floor. It's completely bad. Obviously, that darkness coming in very quickly now in that sort of time of the year. You know, to think, what, a month ago now, we were out in the sun at this sort of time at night. I think it's about half past eight now, something like that. And enjoying watching the sunset, sort of going into around nine. Gone, gone nine. Yeah, she pitch black out here. The wind has calmed down. Like I said, I'm going to enjoy my food. I'm probably not going to touch base here till the morning now, unless um, an absolute pig comes along and hopefully that it does. So yeah, I'm gonna sit back now, enjoy this, <laughs> and I'll see you in a bit. First coffee of the morning, and it's, um definitely perked me up a little bit, a little bit worse for wear this morning, but after that dirty kebab last night, um, a little feel a little bit, you know. So anyway, um, last night, quite uneventful to be honest with you, and I have found that a lot here up Dean's. The wind kicked and it did kick last night and started going down the lake and obviously that's been quite um, consistent throughout last night and obviously this morning it's still trickling down this end which I'm definitely on the right side obviously Pete's over to my left it's sort of flat calm over there but there's this lovely trickle going down which is sort of obviously where I'm fishing I'm sort of fishing off to the right which is perfect because hopefully it pulls the fish so what I've seen or what happened throughout last night I had a few I had, I had, I had a couple of liners on my left hand rod the fish were definitely on me probably was done and then maybe five minutes later right hand rod one single beat, bobbin pulled up, probably a quarter of an inch, and that was it. Probably about half an hour after that, so obviously as, you, as you're there thinking, are oh, them rods gonna go? You're sort of laying there, sort of semi half asleep, if you like. And something, someone, it sounded like someone threw a bloody dustbin in down the end, but that was more so to the right. There's two sets of lily pads. I would have said it was the second set of lily pads, but like I said, it was one almighty thump. So I'm definitely gonna be locked onto the water this morning watch, watching that. Just before I turned the kettle on and um, fired up the gas, dirty great big common. I say probably a mid twenty common. Nice, nice, nice common. Come out full out of the water. Probably in between me and the baited spot in the middle, but more so off to the right. So again, something I'm going to keep an eye on today. But sort of in that zone again. Obviously, I've seen that show, and I thought just before, obviously 
put the kettle on. I thought, you know what, I need to redo them rods. Left hand rod come in, redone the wraps on it. And then the right hand rod come in, obviously prior to that, I'd done the wraps on it. So now I've always got a rod live in the water, put that rod straight back out. Went bang, crack, straight on the spot, lovely. With that then, obviously the other, the other rod wrapped it and again, put it straight back out on the spot. It is quite shallow because obviously like I mentioned, I'm fishing back leads, so the line's going down and along the bottom of the, the lake bed. So that could be that the fish are patrolling the margins and hitting into my line. But I've not seen anything. I am quite proactive. I have been walking up, especially this morning, walking up the margins, checking them, seeing if I can see any misty bits or any kick ups or any physical fish. And unfortunately not seeing anything at all. So I'm gonna sit back, lock onto the water. And fingers crossed, I can nick a nosser. <laughs> All hands on deck at the moment because myself and Brad a bit of a wander this morning and um, there's clearly fish down that left hand side now not only have previously four or five minutes ago walked around and seen fish patrolling a particular bit of the margin which we'll show you in a second um, visibly seen one but also seen a ginormous crash this morning to, to, to make or almost make us go around and have a look it was that obvious. Um, so yeah, with that now, like I said, I'm frankly making a quick bag. Do I want to go and thump a bag over there? Probably not a good idea, because um, it's just going to push them off the spot, being how twitchy the fish are. So what I think I'm going to do is, is get this bag made, cut it off, put a lead on, get the lead over there, go round. I have got my Parker Beta in the car, so I could get that and carefully put it in by hand and um, Brad can give me a hand here to keep the, line, keep the line tight and obviously get that line laid bob on again, which we'll show you. But yeah, so no brain. I rang Pete, so Pete's actually probably thinking, well, how can you fish over there then? But Pete's actually gone to work today and he just called me. I goes, mate, they're all over your peg. He goes, look, he said, put a rod out, mate. You need to, <laughs> if you don't get up here often, you get a rod on it. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, I need to, need to catch something and as I've done that, I thought, oh, you know what? I'm obviously going to bail one of my rods and put the other one over there. But as I've done that, um, I've got a single uh, beep on my left hand rod in front of me. So it's like, oh, no. So I don't want to take both of them off the spot. One of them I'll definitely be keeping on the spot and then obviously playing about that other one. It's a no brainer. Um, sometimes need must, but this is. Um, even more so, I like, like to use the word imperative. You know, you're watching the water, that small little sign can change everything. And particularly here, that one fish could be a banger. So it's like, no, no brainer, do something about it, Ben. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. So double bagging, getting a bag made, going over, and this is gonna be dropped in. I'm gonna make this quick because um, Brad's just been around there to get a little bit of footage, just to see whether he could capture what was going on. <laughs> and he's come back around the corner smiling from here to here. It's like, mate, it's going off over there. Little bit, little bit of fizzing all across the all across the bank, pluming coming up. He's even seen a vortex where a fish has got his head down whilst he was over there. Nowhere near Brad, but obviously I've punched the lead over there. Emphasizing nowhere near Brad. So if anybody any of the little ones or any of the younger generation watching this, I wouldn't advise shooting leads over towards you, mate. It's probably not a good idea, but this was well away. Leads hit over. The last thing I wanted to do is put a four ounce lead or a bomb like that straight in the swim. So I've got my Parker Beta. Now I'm going to clear this now. We don't actually sell these anymore. This was the last one. And in here is um, a little sprinkle of maggots. I've got some mini mix pellet, a little dash of sweet corn and a couple of other naughties as well. And obviously a bag. I'm going to literally put that in, tie it on over there, take the lead off, loop to loop it is. So I'm just going to loop to loop this on and then I'm gonna drop it with the Parker Beta. Something a little bit stealthy, like I said, trying to be that little bit clever. Whilst I'm doing that, Brad will be over here making sure that the line lay is 110% and that will be my little sleeper rod over there. And I've almost, in my head, I've ticked the box of, yeah, I've done everything I can in that section, but I'm quite looking forward to going over and seeing it again over there now myself. So that's the plan of action. Let's head round now.
right hand rod's absolutely screamed off. Dean was here as well, we're all sort of standing there having a good old chat. And it's common. And yeah, she melted off, so. Fingers crossed and get this bad boy in and uh, we shall she show you very soon. That's not a comment, that's Queenie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a fish called Queenie, which I've had before. And it's a banger, if it is the fish I think it is, it's an absolute banger. This way. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. This way. This way. This way. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Catch it, baby. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that for a fish mate. That uh, is why you come to the Lake of Dreams. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> oh god. I do believe it. Well what a magical moment this is and um she looked very big. Very big. Thirty-six pound on the nose. <laughs> lovely, lovely. <laughs> there we are. Well, well, well. I'm a fish. I'm 99% sure it's a fish called Queenie. I'm blown away by this one. Definitely up on weight. £36 on the nose. You wouldn't believe that. As I'm sort of dealing with the fish, <laughs> I've rod absolutely screamed off. I see a fish show and I flick one over there. <laughs> Straight away. Unbelievable. But yeah, didn't manage to land it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> who cares? I've got this bad boy in the bank. Oh, mega times. <laughs> so boss, <laughs> quite handful this one. Very good on the bank though, this particular fish. And there is the other side, just as beautiful. A little bit, just a little bit more of a taste in your mouth of what this beautiful, beautiful place has to offer. Unbelievable, I'm lost for words if I'm honest. Oh, right, there you go, Queenie. <laughs> and he's in again, boy. <laughs> As if that rod ain't been out that long. Brad's actually just gone to the shop to get some more supplies. We've run out of gas. So, after losing that one directly after having the fish on the bank, and then obviously, luckily, Brad was there, so we managed to put it in the sling safely. And then I've got actually got cut off. Which I don't know how I've got cut off because I'm fishing a 35 pound shot feeder, but yeah, right hand rod, same spot. I've got that rod on its own over there, and that's just pulled up 
very delicately there. And I was watching my tip. Jobs are good in. So fingers crossed, I can get this one in on my own. <laughs> and I'll see it a bit. Nice comment. Very nice comment. Is that the other big comment? Another one. <laughs> We've got a bang on the net. Huh? There's a bang in the net. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> Is it all on there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're joking. Right, wow. Brad's back and we are coffeeed up now. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoying my nice warm coffee. Although it's got that lovely sort of temperature to it now. I'm sat in a t-shirt and I feel completely comfortable, if I'm honest. The wind's still trickling down the right hand side towards the house. Obviously after landing that fish, I then put two rods straight on the spot. I thought, you know what, they're there, they're having them. Let's put, let's, let's put two rods on that spot. With that, I've obviously then topped up with, topped up with probably that much of the bottom of a Parker Bates bucket. So it's about six or seven spoms, not much, but they're large spoms. And I'm hitting that spot every time, hitting clip, lovely, straight over the top. And it's funny, and I think it's something worth noting. I've, I'm sure you've heard the term spots have been spots before, but it, it was when I cast the rod, it landed just to the left of the baited spot. And I left it, and that's the one that done Queenie. And then I cast, obviously, again for this common, which is in the net now, and I'll show you in a second it landed just left again. So both of them fish have come just off the baited spot. So whether the, the smaller fish are whacking the middle of the spot, I don't know, or fish are pecking round it, but you know, it's definitely onto something here. So at the moment now, my right hand rod is on the money. And again, the left hand rod is just off that spot again, topped up with bait, can't do no more. So in a second, like I mentioned, I'm gonna show you this beautiful common. Over 36. <laughs> Um, <laughs> a little bit bigger than a foot, not a mid 20, but actually 36 pound four, this particular fish. I don't know the common, but I bet your life, um, you bet your life Pete does. So yeah, blown away. Just, you know, what do I say? <laughs> what do I say? This was shortly after and the spots, um, they're definitely on there and certainly them bigger ones, you know, is this the start of something? Am I going to have a few more? Am I going to be real jammy? Who knows? But I'll show you the other side. And let's get this one back. <laughs> yes. So Bosh, there it is. There's the other side. What an absolute beauty. Or Nossa Pig, as we say here at the Parker Bates YouTube channel, baby. <laughs> yes. Just cutting over the top of the camera. Right, well, it would be rude not to go over my baiting approach for this particular session. Now, I know every time I've been here in the past, I've always given them quite a bit of bait. That's just how I like the fish. I always like to give them a bit of bait. And whether that be a mix of boilie, which I've done in the past, hell of a lot of boilie up here. And it's done me bites, but nothing crazy. Um, obviously pellet I've used before and a few other bits as well. But what I'm gonna to touch on is obviously the mix I've been using, that's done me them absolutely not so big. So, right, with that, I've been kicking it off with a little bit of our chilli hemp. So par Parker's Particle, if you weren't aware, we now offer shelf life particle at the Parker Bates store. So go over now and get yourself some. But we've our, my particular favourite is the chilli hemp. Every carp loves hemp. And then when you've infused it with our chilli, which is our own spice blend that we obviously dust our baits with, is infused within this uh, hemp, so it works very, very well. So moving on from that, I've had a mixture of pellet 
in my mix. Now there's been a couple of reasons for that. So I've, I've, I'll have kick off what the pellet was to begin with. So I've had a four, six and an eight, which is our OG fish pellet, which is infused with squid and octopus. Again, which is the same flavorings we use in our boilies themselves. So I've kicked it off with that. That goes in with the hemp. Next up, I've brought in our mini mix. Well, our mini mix is consists of five different pellets, which is, again, it's going to give you five different breakdowns, but also clumps up quite nice, nicely. And when you've got, when you add our liquid food to it, which I have done on this scenario, I've added our OG fish liquid food, the sauce, I've poured it all on, it makes it very heavy, which then brings me on to the next thing. Now I have been adding a few naturals. So I've been putting in a couple, literally two handfuls of maggot, red maggot, and then a little pinch of chopped worm as well. What this does is, is pulls it straight down on the spot. I don't want it fluttering. By adding them four, six and eight, which is quite a big pellet. And then alongside the mini mix as well, you can fill that spom up lovely. So when it hits the deck, it's dropping on the bottom and you are keeping that bait obviously refined and on, almost on a dinner plate. I'm probably fishing off um, sort of a big dustbin lid, lid on this scenario. And like I've said, I've been having the fish off, just off that dustbin lid and um, not directly on it but at the moment I've got a rod on it to see what happens in one obviously on that original spot. I've been finishing off with something I've been playing about with as well I'm not going to lie let's just say I've been um, getting salty and saying that's going to be coming to the Parker Bates store going into next year very exciting I don't want to give too much away something I've been playing about with in the background for a long long time I've been hiding it away when I've been out with like your likes of Rob and T and I've been keeping it in my bag and sort of adding a little bit in my mix and it's been working me wonders um, let's just say that. So that's been in there as well, but again, stay tuned. And I'm looking forward to the drop of that going into obviously next year. One thing I haven't told you as well, a little bit naughty, as I turn around there and I look at it by the side of me is obviously the magic dust. Now, I think that's been definitely giving me an edge, particularly I love to hit my naturals with it. I put it on my, put it on my maggot, put it on the worm, obviously put it in the mix and then it goes in and then a little sprinkle on top. The magic dust, it really is magic. You don't need much of it. It's a very expensive product, but obviously there's 27 different ingredients within that one and it takes absolutely ages to weigh up. And we're there in the factory for hours and hours doing batches and batches. And it, yeah, it's one of them products that I call it. If I, if I don't go out without magic dust, it, it's one of them I've got to go home and pick up that pot, especially when I'm fishing naturals. I'm almost imperative when I'm fishing naturals, especially in the PVA bag scenario, which I have been doing here as well. By adding that magic dust onto your, particularly your maggots, what you'll find is it stops that bag from breaking. It gives you a little bit more. So I've been putting mini mix pellet, the maggot in the middle with the magic dust, and then obviously a bit of mini mix on top. So then obviously when you do twist that bag up, you're not popping the maggots, injecting it with a flat spot. And that's also done me a bite, but unfortunately I lost that particular fish. So yeah, that's where I'm at. That's my baiting approach. That's how I've applied the bait. And one thing I would say that I haven't mentioned with the bait going out, um, obviously I've been doing just enough. I've been putting up, like I said, I think I mentioned earlier in the, probably this much of a Parker Bates bucket, just enough to top up the spot. When you add in worm, when you add in maggot, the last thing I want is it sit, sitting there festering alongside sweet corn to a degree as well. Because if you put sweet corn and leave it for a long period of time, what I've found is in the past, when you throw your handful in the margin, you start getting a little bit of sweet corn on the top, which is almost drying out. So by doing this, one, it keeps it fresh. And secondly, you're not gonna have any problems with it. Um, poten potentially tainting, tainting your spot and doing the complete opposite and making the fish go away from your spot because you've got ammonia build up from the maggots, you've got gone off worms or worms going off. It's just not a, not a good recipe in my eyes. So that's another reason why I've done that. Clean out the bucket after it and then go again. So that is where I'm at. That's my mix. And hopefully you can maybe take a few things away from this and use in your own angling. Now, how would you guys like to fish the Lake of Dreams? So that's right, you heard me right. 
So the main thing you need to know is, in the description of this video, there's gonna be a link. And if you click that link, it will pull you over to the Carp Tech website. Now that is your opportunity to go over, buy some tickets and have an opportunity to obviously fish this particular lake. So on the screen now, the charities that we're supporting. Now all proceeds, we go into these charities. So get this, there's not just one chance, there's actually three chances, because there's three pegs here at the Lake of Dreams. Now there's a massive reason for that as well, because everybody's gonna have plenty of water to fish in front of them. It's also quite exciting, because anybody who knows me knows I love food, and Dean's gonna be putting on a barbecue, so that's gonna be lovely. And also, as Parker Baits, obviously we're gonna front all the bait for you guys on the lake. So dates will be confirmed, but it will be April of next year, 2025. <laughs> you know, there's no better time to fish this particular lake. There truly isn't. You know, the fish are going to be at their biggest. Is it going to do its first 40? Who knows? Could you be that guy that catches the first recorded 40 pounder? Although we know they're in it, the first recorded 40 pounder out of the Lake of Dreams. So obviously on the day, what we're going to do is we're going to do a full video for the Parker Bates YouTube channel. There's going to be photographers here as well, which will be able to catch the big moments and hopefully you can walk away with one of them pictures like I have in my photo album and you see it on the screen now and you just get that chance to maybe pick up one of them. So there it is. That's all you need to know and what an opportunity. Now go, go below, click on that link, head over to the Carp Tech website and this will be available for just one month. We're gonna shut it off and it's obviously gonna be that live draw. What you'll find is we'll then hit that regenerate number with the numbers that obviously have been bought in the tickets three times to see who them three lucky people are to fish here at the Lake of Dreams. So it leaves me at that. Go and get your tickets now. The very best of luck. Come on the Carp, come on the Parker Bates. It's mad how quick that light fades this time of year, it truly is. But there he is in the background there. Oh, Pete's back and he's getting his rods out. And uh, hopefully he can nick one tonight. So we're going to order some food soon. And um, like I said, it'd be really nice for Pete to have a couple now. The fish were certainly over here this afternoon. Um, and obviously in the morning as well, we see that almighty shower in the corner can he nick one first thing tomorrow morning if it doesn't happen through the night and apparently recently here up the lake of dreams at dean's a lot of the fish have been coming in the day for scenario sake i think ian russell and another gentleman was up here um it was about three weeks ago i think 12 fish come out but i think 10 of them were in the daytime and two of them were at night time so it just puts into perspective like i said a lot of fish are coming out throughout that day period I've got till tomorrow, probably about midday, and then I'm off because I've got to then head to another venue. So I'm hoping and praying there's a Nando's around because I think after the chaos we had last night with that dirty kebab, I was not impressed. So hopefully there's a decent, a decent chicken place near, not Cosmos. I think that's, is that what you say, Pete? Yeah, Cosmos. Cosmos. Stay, stay clear, no moss. <laughs> I'll touch base with you, probably when we get our food, if not with a fish. I'll see you in a bit. Oh, 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 oh. That's a bite. Right, it's right back, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Pete literally come over, he's got his rods out, topped up with bait on both of his spots, sat down next to me. Sort of a, a sigh, sigh of relief. You can tell he's had a busy day. And um, my right hand rod. Beep, 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 beep. Weird drop back. I'm like, that's a bite. Picked it up. Will, 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 will. <laughs> and then click, come into something. It's obviously come straight towards me. And it's off. This is weird because I've never had a fight like this in here. And the second go, I was like, this is a tent. But now it's fighting more like a car. Um, what happened was it's again swam straight towards me. I'm like, why have I got no tension on the board? And again, come towards me. No, not had that before. It's a mag. So yeah. Oh, come on, fish. That'd be lovely. Fish number three. And I don't want to get my hopes up, but it is plodding along. Proper sort of big fish vibes. Or well, decent fish vibes, should we say, but then they're all decent in here. Oh. It's not. It is. 
It's not. It's not. It is. <laughs> I'm thinking it's goes a thousand times. <laughs> no. No. I'm happy with that. Just another good fish. No, the, you know what we were talking about last night? Yeah. Um, TD. Look at that. Banger. Absolute banger. Well happy. Every fish is so nice. Yeah, well happy with that. Madness. Just put the right hand rod out and then the left hand rod. <laughs> but I think it's a tense because it's just coming in too easy at the moment. And there's nothing small in here, so yeah, I put money on this tench. So not quite the species that we're here for, but we respect them all here at Parker Bates and that is a lovely tench. So thank you very much, Mr. Tench. And off you go. Slimy little devil. So I won't be saying the name of this particular fish, children watching, but um, it's a fish that um, a gentleman, Mr. Tom Dove, has actually had this fish the first time he fished up here. And uh, what was it, 24, 12? Did you say 24? 12, yeah, it sits around that way. Yeah, it sits around that, so a lovely one, a real lovely one. Got some nice apple scale slices. And again, off that baited spot, the rod's already back out on the money. This is gonna turn into one of them busy nights. <laughs> How cool is that? The face is almost like ghost-like as uh, Pete described it earlier but now it's in the water it really does look like it's got oh, a ghosty head. Look at that. Oh sh <laughs> Here we go again. Day two of the diet here at the Lake of Dreams and it's going absolutely brilliant. So we've got like a period period which I think is almost like a, a knockoff Nando's. We've got some peery chips in there. Oh, a little cute wrap there for Brad. It's cute, mate. That'll be the corn and the cob. Oh, corn and the cob, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say. Corn and the cob, a big old corn and the cob in that respect. So, garlic mayo. You were right, they did put some utensils in. You said that, you asked for that, and they um, done it all. And look at that, some rice. Very nice too. So that is the dinner for this evening. Oh, I'll show you that. This is mine. Look at that. Burger in there, so. Pepe's, Pepe's, whatever you want to call it, for, for dinner. Um, and hopefully a few more to come, but I'm gonna sit back now, thoroughly enjoy this. And like I said, apologies about all the mess at the moment. It's just been thrown in because I've thoroughly enjoyed myself over the last couple of days and not really cared about how it's looked. I've been concentrating on the fishing. Oh, and eating as well. Oh, and drinking. I've never drunk so many hot drinks in my entire life. Brad behind the camera has shot me no end. I've like, you put the cup down and he's like, brew? Like, what well, do you know, what do I say to that? But yeah, it was that. I've been thoroughly enjoying them. And you probably tell my eyes are a bit all over the place because I've probably done half a thing of coffee today, um, if I'm honest with you. So no, no, joke aside. Time to eat some food. <laughs> I was definitely sound though then, absolutely sound though after a very long and busy day. And without warning, the right hand rod is absolutely melted off. Just a one toner. I keep come over. I've probably been running into it now a few couple of minutes, but it's really interesting to see what this one is. It feels right at the moment. Oh my god, look at that. 
Oh, look at the weed going. Walk back, walk back, walk back, walk back, walk back. Walk back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, what a session that is. Look at that wide and chunky. Madness. Is it the one? Yes, mate, it's 100%. <laughs> Look at that. 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 Thirty-eight pound on the nose, isn't it? Bale, thirty-eight, isn't it? Yeah. Thirty-eight, yeah. Yeah, sweet. Agreed then. So there it is, my little mate. <laughs> and this one just keeps coming back for more. About the biggest weight I've had a um, thirty-eight pound on the nose, and what a session this one's turned into be. Here at the Lake of Dreams, fish called measles. And uh, like I say, I know I always say it, but another fish dearly close to my heart and absolutely blown away. And what an epic fight. I sort of got a little bit scared at the end of it, loosened up my clutch and just played it like a bit of a you know what, and uh, eventually it happened. So, yeah, what a moment. What a moment. Thank you very much, Dean, Karen, and uh, yeah, yeah, blown away. Uh Look at you, what a lump mate. Oh look at it, look at it. Oh mate, what a moment, what a moment. So will you be joining us at the Winter Carp Show? Are you coming to the Winter Carp Show? It's gonna be bigger and better than ever before. So obviously Parker Baits will be attending and bringing the freshest bait in the game. Obviously we're going to be bringing some limited edition products and a normal range as well. So whether that be boilies, magic dust, flat spot, you name it, we're going to be bringing it to the Winter Carp Show. But not just Parker Baits at the Winter Carp Show, there is going to be various other brands. Some of the biggest brands in the game will be attending this particular show. So you're probably all wondering, what are the dates? So it's the 30th of November and obviously the 1st of December as well. So tickets are available now. And what we'll do is to make your life even easier, they're in the description, there's a link in the bottom of this video. So head over, grab your tickets, and when you turn up at the Winter Carp Show, make sure you beeline over to the Parker Bates stand and get your hands on the freshest bait in the game. Come see the Parker Bates, baby! Woo!